Hey guys, oh that sun is bright. How are we doing this morning? We are here for another vlog. There's all the little ones. Yeah, we weaned everything the other day. Uh, that was rather interesting. I don't have any video from when we weaned. And the main reason for that is I was really too busy doing everything else. Uh, the ewes, we wormed the ewes. All the lambs got wormed and got a CDT shot. So they got vaccinated right away before they got put out. Uh, and then everybody got a near tag. Everybody got a scrapies tag. And the reason for that is, well, let me go over here. I think I got video, you can see them. I've got the U in here yet, the, with the spotted head, the paint U. And she's in there with them because I have her, her lamb, uh, her ewe lamb and another ewe lamb sold. I have somebody coming later this week to pick those three up. So I left her in there. I'm going to pull them out in a couple nights, put them in the night before the person comes. So I put scrapies tags in everybody because I don't know for sure who I'm going to keep and who I'm going to sell. So I said, while I had my son-in-law and my daughter help me, I said, tags going everybody. But I had, with my log book or my record book, I had marked down, I kept track of everything, every lamb with every ewe. So I kept pretty busy the day we were vaccinating and worming during the wean because I was marking every scrapies tag, marking those with each lamb individually so I know which is which. I know which ones I want to keep if I'm going to keep some, but I know where every lamb came from. I know who the mother was and so I want to make sure I keep track of that. So I didn't get any video done mainly because that was keeping me pretty busy so I, I will tell you right now next weekend comes another big one now it's my turn to help my son-in-law and he is going to take his ewes we're going to move them all over another pasture his six rams are all coming to the front pasture here between the houses and he bought five other rams from somebody well it'll be almost two weeks ago now they've been quarantined for two weeks so we're going to put 11 rams in this front pen. Next weekend comes the big move. Everybody's moving up for the weekend. I told him to get plenty of help uh, for those rams. So if he's got plenty of help coming, I should have a little more time to do some videotaping because I think that one's going to be a little bit interesting. we got 11 rams to catch, and we want to vaccinate, worm everybody and stuff. So that will probably be hopefully on the next video that we're doing. Ah. Uh, when do you wean? I got the answer. I have the total answer. I know a lot of people ask, when should you wean? Some people say, well, eight weeks old, 10 weeks old, 12 weeks old. Uh, I've seen people say, but by the moon, you got to go by moon phases. There's certain phases of the moon. That's when you want to wean. That's all wrong. I'm going to tell you right now the exact time you need to wean your lambs. All right. I found that out real quick. You wait for a day till it's like gonna be 90 degrees. You want it to be close to 90 degrees. If you have that day, that's when you wean. And the reason for that is because if it's gonna be 90 degrees at, in your house, you're gonna have the air conditioning on and the windows closed and you're not gonna hear all the bawling for the next two days because I mean to tell you, it was noisy around here. The one who's still making noise is actually the you. That's, she's the one that's making noise because she's not with her other you buddies. The babies have kind of given it up. Uh, let's see, where are we at? We are 48 hours. It's 48 hours since they've been out. As you can see, they're pretty quiet. Now, the ewes out here, every once in a while, I got two of them that are just ain't going to give it up. I could hear them this morning. Uh, even from inside the house, I could hear those two this morning. I'm sure my new neighbors probably aren't real thrilled but then again his dogs bark 365 days a year so I don't think he's got any room to complain but that's the way I do it when it's nice and hot you can close the windows you don't have to listen to them that's when you want to wean now construction projects I mentioned we were working on that and let me turn it around and we've been working on that yeah I know that steel is a little dirty but all the steel from my construction projects has come from a neighbor. He had new steel put in his barn a couple years ago. He's had the old stuff stacked up. It's used. Uh, it's going to need some cleaning. 
I'm thinking some of the stuff on top is a little oxidized. So what I'm probably going to do is wait till this fall. I might even wait till next spring. And then it's going to be time to come in, clean it all off. What well, hasn't cleaned off, clean it off. And then I'm probably going to paint it all. I'll go ahead and get some paint and a sprayer and spray it white. But I'll tell you what, I figured it out. I looked the other day. I couldn't believe how much the steel price had gone up since I'd done some of this other stuff. I figured out the other day, I think I've saved right at 75% of my steel cost for what I ended up having to give him. So I'll take a little dirt. I'll take a couple holes. Hey, it's a run-in shed. And, you know, all I want is a place for him to get out of the weather and in the winter. So if it's got a leak or two, I really don't care. And if I'm going to save 75%, I'm happy with that. Now, we're not quite done. I got this part framed down, coming down here. Uh, I got some steel over here yet, but I got to wait till the wind's not blowing. And then I'll finally put the last of the steel on. I got a couple more boards to put up there I'll need some help with. But then I will now have the catch pin all the way back here, 40 feet long. This is 24 wide plus about 10, so I'm about 34 across here. So I'm gonna have, gosh, almost 70 some feet wrapped around here under cover. On the front, and I got some trim pieces put on, maybe make it look a little better too. On the front, as you can see, I dropped the front. I did for two reasons. One, strong south winds. I didn't want too much wind underneath that thing. I'll tell you what, I've seen these things lean to's lift up with the high winds, no matter how secure you make them. So I put a good drop down front. And my main reason here is I'm gonna cut the wind a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna give a little more shade when the sun's coming in from this deal. And I'll give a little more protection in the winter time. Uh, let's come around here real quick. One noise, yeah, I'm glad I'm selling her because she just won't shut up. All right, on the end here. Now what I am gonna do is close down. I'm gonna bring one sheet of steel down. That'll close about a third of it off. And then I'm gonna come down a little. I don't wanna have to duck to go under it. But I walk through, the other side all stays open that way. And I'm doing that. So if I need, I can get a bobcat in here. Uh, we've got, my son-in-law's got two bobcats. So I can come in from there, I can come in from the other side, wherever, but I can get a bobcat working here if I have to. So that side will stay totally open. I want to leave that open. My other thought is, let me kind of stay in the shade for the camera. Here is the gate that goes to this pasture. And as I mentioned before, redoing, there's the gate that goes out to that pasture. That'll also take me up to that pasture when I finish fencing it, and I'm probably going to do that in the next week or two. My other idea on that is we're getting close to needing a lot of pins. And if, this, if you're just starting a sheep, this is something to think about. Uh, okay, come fall, if I got rams, I got some ram lambs I'm gonna keep, all right? I've got a couple ewes in there I may keep. I'm thinking of that paint ram, keeping him and breeding him to one or two of my ewes over there. All right, that's a maybe, I don't know for sure. But that means they need a pin. I need to put Max with all my ewes. They need a pin. If I have any other rams around that I'm keeping, they need a pin. And all my little ones out there yet, and there's five of them, all right, they're all ewes. They're all ewe lambs. If I'm keeping them, I'm going to have to have another pen for them because I can't leave them with the big ewes anymore So because I can't take a chance they'll get bred. So come winter, I may need four separate pens to keep all my sheep. At least three, if not four. So my thought is, as I've closed this part way down, if I come across here with a fence and split this pen right down the middle, I could take this whole big pen, split it down the middle, I can have stuff there, I can have stuff here. The stuff in this pen can go to that pasture. The stuff in that pen can go to that pasture. I still got that pen and that pen plus two other pastures. So this pen has the ability to get split down the middle and that is a possibility. That may happen when it's all said and done. We'll just see where we stand. I gotta see what I sell, what I still keep. That's gonna have a lot of determination of what I end up doing. So. Hey, I wanted to mention too, real quick, I mentioned my t-shirts. Hopefully you can see it this time. I can show that to you. The camera's probably in for the, for the sun. There we go. 
I made this one. I made another one. I designed two of these. They are now available. Amazon's finally allowing them to sell again. Hey, 4th of July, you got a 4th of July party to go to. There's what you need right there. I'll put a link down in the description. Hey, they're 15 bucks. So what are you gonna get for a $15 t-shirt, right? Let everybody know I raise sheep. How's that? All right, that's all I got. Next one <laughs> may be a real interesting one. We get all those rams sorted out and worked with. Until then, thanks for sticking with me. Subscribe to the channel if you would. Hope to see you again real soon.